Hello, this video is a demo one or two walkthrough of my feelings. Hello, my name is Joanne Foster and I am a mentor teacher with Zebra English and I interview applicants. Okay, so I have put off for a long time doing a demo walkthrough of the My Feelings lesson, but I figured I coach applicants, I help them every day, and I might as well go ahead and put this demo walkthrough out there for you from an interviewer's perspective and what might help you to have um, greater results with your demo. Okay. So I'm going to go through it slide by slide and just give you just some tips and sort of how I would teach it if it were my lesson. And I will also break this down into segments so that if you only need to know how to do one slide or one game or you're not sure about something, you don't have to watch the whole demo. Okay, so there are 14 slides that we do in this demo. Now this demo, they want you to do it in 20 minutes, not 25 minutes. Okay, we need a few minutes of, a couple minutes of chit chat in the beginning to go over tool usage, um, just to be able to say hi and help you to feel more relaxed. Then do the 20 minute demo and then have a couple minutes at the end to give you some feedback um, before we um, let you go. Okay, so let's go on with the beginning of this demo. Now, I do have some other videos that go over skills that Zebra English looks for in these demo videos and um, one called How to Rock Your Demo 1 or Your Demo 2. And that will go over tips of how to prepare for this demo. It's very important that you prepare. Prepare and practice. If you do not, most likely you will not pass your demo. We rarely, if ever, see anyone try to wing it and pass it unless they are just an outstanding, amazing teacher that um, already has all the skills that Zebra English is looking for. And remember, Zebra English is looking for TPR. They want TPR more than they want props. Try to um, brush up on your TPR, Google TPR. I have a couple videos on TPR and bring that into your lesson because that is what Zebra English is wanting to see. It's the science behind TPR, TPR, when the students do it with you, then that TPR gets cemented into their minds better than just holding up a prop and showing them a prop. Okay, it's better to do smile and then get them to do smile with you because not only are they seeing it, hearing it, but they're also doing it. And anytime we add in more senses when we're doing something, then guess what? It sticks better in our minds. It's just like if we write down schoolwork, it's going to stick better than if we just listen to it or if we just see it. All right, so TPR and then modeling. Modeling is another skill I want to talk to you about for a minute. And modeling is the I do, we do, you do. Now, when you do modeling, it should be something like moon. That is I do. Now the we do. Let's do it together. Moon. And then get them to do moon. When you're listening they have repeated you doing or you can circle moon and listen and get them to repeat it all right the third step the you do part is when you do it without saying anything and listen and they do it or you circle it without saying it anything except like what's this but you're not saying moon for them to repeat it after you you're like what's this circle it and get them to say it or underline it if it's a sentence and get them to say it that's the you do. Okay, so I do is you doing it, demonstrating it, or reading the sentence, he feels hungry. The we do part of it is when I do it, the student repeats it. And then the you do part of it is when the student outputs it all by themselves. I don't say anything. I either do the TPR for it, I circle it, or I underline it. And you can ask a question like, what's this? That's not giving them the word or the sentence. Okay, so that's modeling and be sure you know how to do those two skills because Zebra English is wanting to see that. All right, so let's go on with the first slide. The first slide is your intro slide and it says my feelings. 
Now, you come into that slide, you want to build rapport with the student. So I would do something like, hello, my name is Teacher Joanne. What's your name? Bob, nice to meet you. Bob, how old are you? Four? Wow, that's big. Bob, are you happy? Yes? Awesome! Can you say, I am happy? Good job, Bob. Okay, Bob. My feelings. Okay, so they want you to introduce the topic here. So make sure that you introduce my feelings or talk about my feelings. You can circle Zach on the um, board and you can ask how does Zach feel, um, anything like that. Now you see I brought a prop in and I made it a little bit more fun for Bob to build that rapport. You can ask them what's your favorite hamburger, I mean, what's your favorite food? What's your favorite color? Do you like red or blue? Or you can make some mention of something that they have on. That's building rapport, making that connection, being warm, genuine, big smile, and being excited to see them and focusing on them as a student. Now, don't spend a lot of time here. Now, we want to transition in to the next slide. That's the follow me slide, which is the selfie slide. So, after I said, my feelings. All right, here we go. Let's take a picture click the button or I could click it before I said, let's take a picture. Then I'd be like, you see the circle up there? So after I said, let's take a picture, I would say, can you make a heart? Now you can do it this way, like the picture shows you, or you can do it this way. Either way, it's not focused so much on what the symbol is as much as it is building the rapport with the student. So you click the camera button up there, it counts down, three, two, one. So I'll be like, all right, make a heart. Three, two, smile. Ching, ching. Great job, Bob. Very good. Okay, can you do victory? Victory. All right, click it. Three, two, smile. Ching, ching. Yay, awesome, Bob. Okay, can you do smile? Click it. Three, two, one. Awesome. All right, Bob. Which one is your favorite? Number one, number two, number three. And if you click those pictures, they'll come back down to cover your faces. And each time you click another one, the other one will go back up to where it's supposed to be. So I'll ask them which one is their favorite. Remember to keep your sentences to five words or less. So, which one is your favorite? And I bring him back down, number one, number two, or number three. And say he says number two. Awesome! Bob, say, I like number two. And you can finger count if you want to. Or you can say, I like number two. Or, I like two. However you want to do it, it's just to build rapport with the student. Now, what about if you forget and you ask them to do um, a thumbs up? It's okay. It's all about building rapport. Don't worry if you messed up one of the symbols. I mean, if, if you don't see that smile, that's a little bit hard to see what they're trying to do. You can do smile. You can do smile. It doesn't matter. Okay, what matters is you building rapport with that student. Okay, so that's the selfie slide. It does not work in the classroom, but it, well, in the practice room. It will work in the classroom. Okay, and you just do not hit new round unless you're stuck or the slide is frozen. Because if you hit new round, it's always gonna take you back to that first circle. All right, now, next is the cultural slide. So, when I transition into the cultural slide, you know, I've probably I've said, okay, I like number two. Good job, Bob. You get zebra coins and hit the zebra coins button. And then I would hit the slide button and I would say, oh, what do you see? Because we're going into the culture slide. And there's a whole scene that you can gauge the student's ability to see what 
that they see and their language output on it. That's an open-ended question. And they could say girl or mom or hat, tree, gift, present, whatever they say. And if they said um, tree, you could say, yes, I see a tree. You can get them to do it with you. Can you do it with me? I see a tree. Or I see a girl. Anything like that that you can do TPR. Now you can do the finger counting, but you want to do it just here and there. You do not want to do this for every sentence they make. Okay, they need to see it. They need to do the TPR with you. All right, so ask them what do they see. Then if they do not say anything, then you could say, do you see a girl or a boy? Give them an A, B option. Okay, and then they could say, girl. You say, yes, I see a girl. And then click that number one button over there and you can, it sparkles around their face. And then you can ask them, how do they feel? Now you can do feel like this, you can do feel like this, um, feel like this, I mean, however you want to do it, like this, um, some or do like this, doesn't matter. What matters is that whatever you choose for feel, it stays feel throughout the whole lesson. Okay, so they feel happy. And then you get them to repeat it. They feel happy. Right, if they don't repeat it, then you can do the TPR again. They feel happy and get them to do it with you. Okay, so that's the cultural slide. And then after that, you want to go on to the phonics slide. Now with the phonics slide, and I do not have my M here, but say if I had the letter M, M, let's see for the letter M, okay, that you can hold up or you can circle it on the screen. You can say, boy, yes. And if they said M, yes, M. What sound does M make? And you just listen. Always lean in and listen. Or you can just put your hand back here like this, like I'm listening. And then if they say M, yes, mmm, mmm. Now, do not say M, M, wrong sound, okay? We have to say mmm, mmm, and you could say mmm, 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 and get them to say mmm, 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 and get them to say it three times with you. And then you get the, click the number one, mouse pops up. You could circle it and say, what's this? And if they don't know what it is, then you could say, mouse. Or some people will go like, mouse, mouse. And they'll do something like that, or they'll say, mouse, mouse, and put it together. So however you want to do that, or you could just say, mouse and like do TPR for mouse and then be like, can you say mouse? Mouse. Good job. Okay, so then you go on, you um, hit the number two button. When you hit number two, then it's going to come up and whack. Okay, and you can do, all right, are you ready? Whack. whack. And then it whacks. Okay, so they can do the whack. They really can't do it. They're just imitating like they can when you hit the button. Now, after they hit the button, then mug pops up. So I'll be like, ah, you know, and I'll circle it. Can you read? What's this? And see if they can. If not, I'll be like, mug. Great job. So see if they'll say mug by doing some TPR, like you drink and then you're pointing to the mug. Or again, you can do this where you're sounding out the word and you say, mm, ug, mug, 
or m, ug, mug. Many different ways that you can do it. Just do whatever you want to do. You're teaching these words. Now the next one is moot. So you hit number three and say, okay, are you ready to whack? Whack or bop or however you want to say it. And then the third one comes up and it's moon. And I like to do this one and I like to show modeling on this one because I think it's fun. But um, I learned this from an applicant. They did moon like this and I thought it was the coolest TPR for moon. So I have used that a lot. So I would say moon. Let's do it together. Moon. Get them to do it. That's my we do step. And then our my third step would be you do. So I'd be like, yes, great job. Moon. And then you could ask them again, what's this? When you circle it, yes and celebrate them and as you're celebrating click to that next um, you know slide number and that's going to take you to the next slide all right so remember that you always need to be celebrating as you're going to the next slide or you need to have some transitional statement like what do you see if you're going into a scene or let's go here we go and just make it exciting and have some kind of transitional statement that you can go into okay so after that, we come up to what's missing. So I found this one that has um, your three different vocabulary words, and you can TP arm and you know and say what's this as you circle it. And remember, use the magic marker or the marker to circle. If you use the marker, it has to be turned off for the games to work. The magic marker is the right click of your mouse. When you use the right click of your mouse, then it disappears as you're going. But if you circle over and over, it will continue to circle. Or you can underline and go back and underline some more. Okay, so anyway, I would like circle it and say, what's this? And get them to say if it's happy, tired, angry. And go through those words. And then after that, I would be like, okay, let's hide. And then, and I do this game every day, and that's how I do it. Let's hide, and I push the button for the one that I want to hide, the card. And then I'm like, okay, mix, 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 mix. <gasps> What's missing? And then I lean in, and I'll be like, hmm, what's missing? And then if they are hesitating and not saying it, I would be like, and give them the clue of what's missing. Okay, and remember pacing is important, so it's quicker to do TPR and get them to say the word than it is to go back over the words, you know, oh, we've got angry, tired, and you still haven't given them a clue to what it is, and it's taken time, and it's cut down on your pacing. So just watch that. I would just TPR it and get them to say it, and then you could be like, yes, I feel happy. Let's do it together. and get them to make a sentence out of it. Okay, it's as easy as that. Okay, so work through those. Now, you do not have to do all three of those cards. It's the only game that we do not have to do all three. If you have time, do all three. But if you need some pacing help, then just do two of them and go on to the next game. Now, and I'm going to tell you this, don't play any of the games more than once. Okay, it'll cut, it, it's going to ruin your pacing. You've got to pace through this in 20 minutes. Okay, so the next card game that we have is the magnified card. Now, I may be like, okay, let's go. Here we go. And we go into the next one. I um, click the slide number button. And this time I click the card and this card turns over. And when the card turns over, there's a sentence like, I feel happy or he feels tired. Now, for he, she, you need to come up with your TPR for it. You can do he one way, she the other way. You can do he, like sign language ball cap for he, she for a bonnet string along your chin. Um, but whatever you do, just come up with that TPR that you want for he or she. It'll be very helpful when you do these sentences. All right, so you could have them, all right, you turn it over and it says, I feel happy. Now, you could ask them to read, and if they don't read it, then you could underline and say, I feel happy. 
and then listen. I and get them to do it. Or you could TPR it and you could say as you're, and then you can underline it for them to say it. But you can TPR it and demonstrate it to them and then underline it as they're saying it. See if they can read. Okay, so just work with those sentences trying to get the student output. Now remember, with Zebra English, we're always trying to get sentence output. All right, so go over both of those two or three cards that are there. And then like if it's she feels tired, you could do something like she feels tired. And again, it's going to be you getting that student output, correcting any errors that the interviewer gives you, modeling if you need to model, helping your student with whatever um, level that they're at. If you can say read and listen and underline and they can read, then that's great. But if they're not reading, then you need to help them and say he feels angry angry and do that and I don't know what the sentences are I'm, I mean I do know they use those words but I don't know if it's he or she um, but you get the gist of where I'm going with all of this okay so then we go on to the look and say now this is a good slide to use the transition what do you see um, or let's look and you go into that slide that way because there's a whole scene there and again you're wanting to get the student to output these sentences three sentences with three characters you have to click the numbers uh, students cannot see the sentences but you're asking questions now so you push number one and Zach becomes happy and you say how does Zach feel and if they say happy, like, yes, he feels happy. Awesome. And you can, and if they like say Zach instead of he, then you can circle Zach and you can say he. Or if Emma, if they say Emma instead of she, you can circle her and say she and get them to say she. You can also ask different questions about this slide. You can ask, what is Zach doing? I'd be like, what is Zach doing? If they said paint, I'd be like, yes, he is painting. And then get them to say it back to me. All right, let's do it together. He is painting. Okay, sometimes you may not have a TPR for is. It's okay. You can say is painting because that's what he's doing. Okay, so and if I say okay a lot, sorry. All right, so that's the look and say. Just go through each character and ask your questions if you have time to ask those questions. Remember, keep your eye on pacing. Now, next after look and say, you have the turntable game. So a good transition for that would be, let's play a game or however you wanna do it. That's just how I do it, okay? Let's play a game. Yay! And we get there. Now, remember, there's only two things that the student can do. They can push play and click the lucky box. And you want to make sure that you have them do both of those. So we get to this game. You have to click the button up there for that word. And when the button on the turntable lights up yellow, then that means the student can click it. So you would say to your interviewer, click or push play. And then you can circle it right there so they know the first time that you do it. Oh, that's where she wants me to push play. Push play. And then they'll push play. And during games, remember, don't be silent. So here we go. Round and around and around we go. And stop is what I do when the um, card comes out. And I make it fun. So then when that word pops up, and now we're going to have full thirsty or hungry, then you need to TPR it. Hungry. Now, let me give you some tricks about hungry and full. Do not do them down here. No, no, no. You need to keep them above screen level. So you want to do hungry. Hungry. Take a bite of something. Hungry. All right. When it is full, you can do something like full Full. I guess that keeps it from being in front of my face, but you can say full or 
full full <laughs> yeah, I've seen all of those that applicants have used oh and I've seen um, this one full like they're pushing food away from them but whatever you do you want it to be above screen level okay so again pick one that you like that you're comfortable with that you can do well and pick that one to be your TPR for that all right so once you do that and they push play and you're going round and round and round and it comes up and it's hungry and you're like hungry hungry all right let's do it together hungry your turn and get them to say it now i probably did it too many times right then but you get the gist of how to make sure that they know it and if you need to do modeling and demonstrate that you know modeling that's a good place to do it on or you could teach them where they're hungry and then you could be like all right sentence how do i feel Hmm. And that'd be like, how, um, how do I feel? Hmm. I feel hungry. And then you could get it. Let's do it together. I feel hungry. So again, that's how you can go through those words. Thirsty. You remember you're going to speak thirsty, thirsty, because if you just do this, this is drink. Okay. It's not drink, it's thirsty, thirsty. And listen for errors. Your interviewer may say thirsty. You need to be listening for that. And then on error correction, you need to error correct a few different times and different ways. You can say it like this one time, thirsty. You can say thirsty, thirsty, thirsty. Loud, thirsty, thirsty. You know, get them to sing thirsty, thirsty, thirsty. Any way that you can have fun with that student and correct that error, get the right student output. Okay, so I think you get the gist of how to do the turntable. Go through each word. Now that lucky box is where it says times 10. You can give that wherever you want to in the lesson. I typically go down the three words and then give the lucky box at the end. Um, that way I'm not confusing myself. But some people like to give it first just to give some pizzazz before they get into the um, you know words and you can do that so you could um but when you come to that and you click 10 and then they and you say push play and they push playing around and around and around we go and stop and then the lucky box comes up i'm like oh, click 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 and they're like ding 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 oh, 10 saver coins have fun with the student lucky boxes and click click because when they're doing their lessons they are either on a tablet which most of them that I see are on tablets or a PC so I do a lot of click click because they're using their iPads or their tablets or you can do click with the mouse if you know that they're using a computer all right so now after turntable we go to slot machine so again let's play a game or here we go um, and you're going to the slot machine game now the slot machine game similar you're clicking on the word and that word is going to come up in a sentence and it's a slot machine that goes around and around and it's going to be like he feels hungry she feels thirsty something like that so again when you do that game spin 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 as it's oh no first of all say push play and then after they push play spin 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 or spin 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 all right let's do it together spin 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 and get them to spin along with you that again is how you have fun with your student and keep them engaged in the lesson okay you will rock your demo if you will just have fun and do those type things and if the interviewer is looking at you let them look at you <laughs> you still have fun and you know what you're doing and you're having fun and this student, if they don't want to have fun, that's their problem. But you're going to have fun and show that you can have fun with the student. All right, so you're at slot machine, and it, he feels hungry, she feels thirsty, whatever the sentence is, I am full. Um, again, say, can you read? And underline as they're doing it. And if they can't read, then say, I feel hungry. And get them to read it, um, or full. He feels full, like that. 
So just get that student output. Remember, just play it through one time each. Deliver that lucky box. <gasps> I click, I click. Ding, 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 ding. <gasps> 10 zebra coins. And then after slot machine is role play. So I will click, you know, I'll be like, great job. Because we just got the lucky box and I'll be like, <sighs> click it, you know, as we're celebrating and it's going to the next slide. I'll be like, all right, listen. And then as the as I tell them to listen, I push the animation button for the role play. And on role play, as it's um, acting out, like, um, Emma, how do you feel? I'll be just acting out silently as the animation's going on. Look at the dog. How does it feel? It feels tight. It feels tight. So I'll just be acting out sort of the main points of the role play as the role play is going on. Okay, then when the role play gets through playing, then I will say, okay, I am Zach, you are Emma. Now you can circle it, they like for you to do that and say, I am Zach, you are Emma. You can do it either way, but just make sure you tell who they are and who you are. And I'll be like, my turn, Emma. Look at the dog and then drop down theirs and then I'll lean in and underline what they're to say. Um, you know, I don't even know what they say, but he feels tired. I feel hungry, whatever it is, then I feel hungry. And then you just underline it as they say it. If they don't know it, then you could be like, and try to get them to do hungry. If they still don't do it, then you can say hungry sort of whisper it, but enough for them to hear it, that you're sort of like giving them that little hint to get that word. So you drop down yours and you read it, drop theirs down, listen and underline as they're reading it, drop down yours to read, then drop down theirs, listen and underline as they're reading it. And then after you get through with that first time doing it, you'd give the TPR for switch and you say, okay, let's switch. Now that's my switch. In their videos, they do like this. But however you do it, just make it clear and say the words with it. Let's switch. And then you can say, all right, you will be Zach and I will be Emma. Or you will be Zach, I will be Emma. And then you're going to listen first and underline as they do Zach's part. Then I'm going to do Emma's. Then you do help them do Zach's part. If they mispronounce a word, let them finish the sentence and then come back and say, how? How does he feel? And then go back over it, okay? Then go back and forth like that. Now, when it gets through, you can ask a question. <gasps> Jojo, where are they? And circle the word park. Um, be like, where are they? Hmm. Circle the word. If they say park, <gasps> yes, yeah, say, they are at the park. Yes, good job. Okay, so that's just how, you, if you don't have time, if you're pacing, again, then don't leave out the part question. Okay, the main thing is that you reveal those scripts, that you assign the roles, that you have that dialogue together, and you switch the roles. Those are the main parts of the role play. Now, the next one is presentation. So I'm like celebrating student, great job, Bob, Cha -cha -ching. you get super coins. All right. It's presentation time. Now that's my TPR that I use like almost every day for presentation time. You can do something else. Or it's presentation time. Like, you know, you're at a microphone like Zach's at the podium with the microphone. Or you could be like, all right, sit up straight. It's presentation time. Um, it's a speech practice and it's modeling. I do, we do, you do. So when you do this, this is the way that I do it. I'll be like, listen. I am happy. He is tired. She is thirsty. He is full. And I'll be acting it out as I'm saying it, just like I would a speech. Okay, so after that, then I will say, um, okay, let's do it together. Um, I will say it. You will say it. And then I'll say, I am hungry. And then I'll listen. He is thirsty. And then I'll listen. 
She is tired. But you're underlining everything. So it's say, repeat, say, repeat. You're doing it together. If you have a microphone, you could, I am hungry. And then as you hold that microphone, underline, I am hungry. So you either listen with your ear or you're listening with a microphone, but the whole time you are underlining for the student to read. If they don't know a word, then TPR it to see if they can say it. Or circle the picture up there and see if they remember it. And if they still don't, say, tired, and help them with it. Okay. Now, after you do the back and forth, then it's the you do part of the modeling. Now, that's where they are to do it all by themselves. So the way I do it in my classroom, I say, okay, it's your turn all by yourself. They're now going to do it all by themselves. And this is like my speech. That's why I outline like that. I don't know. But um, you can do it like, all right, it's your turn all by yourself. And let them do it. So then with me, I'm cupping my ear and I'm underlining. And you use the, you can use the magic mark, not the magic. The permanent marker is a good time to use that on this. Because it's your last time doing this slide. You don't need to clean anything off. And you can do your ear and have that magic marker and go through the first one, not magic marker, sorry, permanent marker, then the second, then the third, then the fourth. Again, TPR if they need help with a word or um, circle it up there or just finally say it again if they don't know it. And then when they get done, yay, good job. You are so smart. Good reading. Um, however you want to celebrate them, but make sure you celebrate them. And then the next slide is pronunciation slide. Now, I want to tell you on the presentation slide, before we go to pronunciation slide, that it is very important that you do all three steps. If your pacing is off, do not skip one of those steps. Still do all three of those steps and just get stopped on your pacing. But it's more important to get that modeling um, example, that modeling down, than it is to skip one of those and because for the sake of your pacing. Okay, the modeling is more important than your pacing in my mind. Um, so that's just my two cents on it. Okay, so now let's go to pronunciation. When you do pronunciation, all that slide is for is to introduce that you're about to go into pronunciation. So I'm like, it's pronunciation time. Or you could point to your mouth or it's pronunciation time. You don't have to sing song it. That's just me. Okay, you could say rattle. I think somebody shook um, maracas or something. Pronunciation time. Pronunciation time. You know, whatever you want to do. Just have fun with it. And then go to your next slide, which is your pronunciation slide. By this time, they should be able to read this slide. So I would be like, read. And then I listen and underline as they read. Now he feels thirsty. Whatever it is. And then put it up in big face. You have to put it in big face to work on pronunciation. So the word there is the red word thirsty, and I'd be like, thirsty. Good. Thirsty. Maybe. Thirsty. Thirsty. Thirsty, thirsty, thirsty. All right, your turn. Thirsty, thirsty, thirsty. Okay, did you see? There are different ways to work on it and have fun with your student and still focus. If they're not getting the thirsty, you could say thirsty, sti, thirsty, and see if they would get that. All right, then kick it back down into the regular sentence. If you have time, you could read it again. What is he? Or not, don't ask that question. Say, how does he feel? He feels thirsty. Great job. Now, this is a slide that many people lose it on, not the pronunciation slide, but the closing slide. Too many times I see people get to this slide and they just fizzle out. They're like, okay, that's our lesson. Bye. But they don't even say bye. And I'm like, no, finish strong. Okay. So, there's a box that pops up. It pops up in every one of our lessons. It wants you to make sure that you're ready to end the lesson because it's going to tally all the zebra coins.
Now, when you go to tally all these zebra coins, make sure that you have 50. It's a good reminder, that box popping up, do I have 50 zebra coins? Because if I don't, you hit those reward buttons and you'll say, Bob, you did such a good job. You get zebra coins, ching, 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 and just run them up if you've lacking. Okay, that's better than having 41 zebra coins and hitting that and now you didn't meet the, re the requirement, the minimum requirement. So check that. Let that box be a check for do I have enough zebra coins. All right, so then I click yes, I want to exit, and yes, you click that. You've got to finish that slide. It's not going to kick you out of the classroom. Sometimes applicants are concerned about clicking it. So then click it, yes, and I'll be like, here we go, because it's going to uh, kick them over into the winner's circle. So I'll be going around and around while they have the fireworks all starting to go. And then I'll be like, oh. when they kick them over, it kicks them over into the slide. Um, and they're in a winner's circle is what I call them. And I'll be like, here we go. You are in the winner's circle. Yay. Do round of applause. Uh, bring your hand clapper out. Do it raise the roof with them and do that. Just um, have fun with that student. Okay, so then, and I'll be like, oh, how many zebra coins did you get? And then I'll be circling it on the trophy there. And I'll be like, 85, wow, that is amazing. And then it's a good time to bring the Zach, the zebra trophy down from your stickers and Make him enlarged and pull him over by the student. I'll be like, you are a champion. Great job, Bob. Bob, do you feel happy? And then he says, yes. Say, all right, together. I feel happy. All right, Bob. I will see you next week. Goodbye. And finish out strong your lesson. All right, so I hope those tips helped you. Remember, you have 20 minutes to do the demo lesson. Practice, practice, practice. Use all the tools. Even practice the ones that are not activated in the classroom. Practice going up to that award button. Even though you can't do it in the practice room, still get that muscle memory going so that when you're nervous and in that interview, that your muscle memory will kick in and practice with a timer over and over until you can get your pacing at 20 minutes. And that includes giving time for student responses and student errors. They are going to make errors and more than one error. So calculate that into your timing because you need to correct the error two or three times with that student. So you've got to calculate that into. Right. I hope this has helped you walk through the demo and will help you to be a little bit more confident. Remember, you do what makes you, you. If there's anything that you can pick up from me and make your own, then that is great. I love doing that. And so much of who I am as a teacher is picking up tips here and there and how people do things and then making it my own. Don't try to be someone else. Be yourself, but take ideas and tips from other teachers and then make them your own. Okay. That's my hints. I hope this has helped you. If you need any help going through the application process, all of my information is below. We have an awesome uh, coaching group and we offer one-on-one -on -one individual coaching before your demo one and then also before your demo two. Now, if you're watching this and you don't have a coach or you're not working with us, then please remember, to get that feedback from demo one if you have to do a demo two. You need the written feedback to know what you need to improve on or you'll make those same mistakes for demo two and you won't pass and then it'll be over for three months until you can reapply. So write Zebra English at resume at zebraenglish.com. Okay, write them there, email them and get your feedback. They will give it to you. Now it may take a day or two, especially if it's over the weekend, but get that feedback. And when you get that feedback, then practice those points that need improving. And if you're not sure about what it means, then find a teacher that's with Zebra English. Now we have differing support pages. 
even if you're into the process and you don't have a referral, there is um, Zebra English Unofficial Teacher page. You can look for that. All applicants can go there. Um, myself, I am a moderator on there, um, as well as my other um, coaching team member, Sherry, and then of course, Karina, who was the first one that set up our unofficial page and our official teacher page. She is the admin on that site. And so there's lots of help from teachers and applicants on that site. All right, well, Zebra English is a great platform, a great place to be. If you have any questions, need any help, just reach out to me below, subscribe to my channel. I try to come out with different videos uh, to help through the application process and then also to help teachers once you become a Zebra English teacher or any kind of ESL teacher that needs tips. All right, thank you again and happy interviewing. Goodbye. Bye.